You're listening to Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G, a podcast that invites you to experience the world through the perspective of one black man, one conversation, one story, or even one rant at a time. Here's Dr. G. I want to try something new in 2019. You know, at the beginning of the year, everyone starts looking at their resolutions, but it's typically based on things you think you're supposed to do or you have to do, like lose weight. And so I want to reflect on 10 things that I that I get to do, that I really want to do, that I will look forward um, to doing, accomplishing, becoming more involved in. And so I just want to share that list with you. Um, First one is writing. Um, When I was younger, writing was really a lot of work for me. But the older I get, the more therapeutic it becomes. Now, it's much easier to get behind a mic and just pontificate. But writing takes um, it takes finding a silent place, a quiet place, um, being a little bit more focused. Uh, But writing allows me to be more candid than I am in any other communication uh, medium. When I'm writing, I feel like that's when I'm the rawest and I'm I'm. I'm the most authentic. And so I want to write not just for where I'll publish or post it, but just for more occasion for greater authenticity. And then once it's written, I can read it or use it as a poem or use it as a part of a speech. But just writing in itself is really great. Um, you know, the cool thing about looking forward to things or sharing your ideas or writing them down is that it's, it seems to create this energy to make it happen. So last night I just met up with a friend after work, uh, a couple of drinks. He and I were talking. And um, out of nowhere, he just said, you know what? I have a cottage. And, you know, when I learned that when my wife friends said they have a cottage, they mean a house and uh, like with nice space. And he said, I got a cottage. And if you ever want to go and spend time writing or planning or just having some time alone or with your family, you can do it. Just let me know. And what a gift. First of all, I'm glad that I have friends like that, too. I'm glad they trust me that I'm not going to go up there and just mess their stuff up. But three. That's what I really need. I can't write in libraries. Home is too busy. I'm too distracted. So I'm looking forward uh, to writing because of the level of authenticity that it that it creates. And I think the byproduct will be that it will resonate with someone else. Um, Two, I want to dream bigger. Now, people who know me, who know me as visionary, um, as being visionary, they're thinking, okay, dude, you're crazy. You're you you you're 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 still trying to fulfill stuff um, that you've been chasing since you were 16 or 17. And it's happening. But um, but I want to dream for for the next um, phase of my life. I'm 55, but I, I want dreams for what pre-retirement, um, post-retirement really looks like. But I, I want to dream about um, greater um, influence, not because I want to be important, but because I want to be effective. Um, I want to dream bigger about how I can chill with my family, how I can pour into other folks. I want to just dream bigger about thoughts that I have things that I've created. I want to dream bigger about this podcast. I want to dream bigger about um, my next book. I want to dream bigger about um, just chilling and having fun. But um, sometimes in my line of work, I just tend to just um, lay back in the pocket and um, take it easy, um, not rock the boat too much. And I don't, I want to, I want to be in a phase where I'm not limiting myself. And so whatever it is, wherever it is, I need to dream. I just want to do it bigger. Um, third is understanding personal investment as a man of faith, as a person, as a, as a, as a pastor, I have taken no vow of poverty. Um, and so I want to understand how money works. And so whether that's, um, income property or whether that's investment, it's just always intrigued me. I was an Afro American history and econ major. So finances have always, um, just, just been something that I've been interested in. And um, I've got friends and folks who who know how to fly, how to flip houses. Um, they've got a knack for investment. I've got friends who are hedge fund managers and I've always been intrigued, but I haven't really said tutor me or help me to know how to do this. Or can I shadow you? Or if I if I decide to move in this area, can you give me some pointers, particularly things to not do? So personal understanding, personal investment is something that I really, really am looking forward to understanding in 2019. Four, I want to coach younger leaders. Um, I had a young man um, FaceTime me this week. He wasn't feeling well and felt badly about not being able to make our appointment. Um, I appreciate when people cancel appointments when they're sick um, because I don't want to catch what they've got. But we had a FaceTime chat and it was really good. 
And as we were talking, you know, he explained things that he wanted to learn from me, things he'd been noticing. But I mentioned my podcast, uh, my website. He didn't know that I was an author. So, I, you know, I was able to you know, point him to a couple of books that I had written. And he was really, really intrigued. And he said, you know, I need to do my homework, you know, so that I know what to ask you. I, I, and so for for me, it felt really good to have someone take mentoring seriously, not just wanting to absorb your time because I can get to you and you've got some stuff that I want to know, but really understanding what it is I'm about, because I can tell him things. But some of that's been much of that's been written out and uh, he can form better questions if he just does a little bit of homework like I was trained to do before a job interview. And so um, and he was he was gracious and and, and, and and so appreciative that I directed him that way. So I'm looking forward to the follow up. But I just feel that there's a time that this is just time for me to find ways to be very conscientious about pouring into younger leaders, younger men and women. Um, it's something I saw 30 years ago when I was new in my career, creating a nonprofit. And I know what that felt like. I remember what that felt like to have great ideas and not really know who to take those ideas to. So um, and I, I also want this is let me just back up to two to spaces to dreaming bigger. Um, I want to f- I want to find ways of using technology so that I'm not limited to just mentoring those who um, are within my my uh, my my area who are here in Wisconsin, South Central Wisconsin. Um, there's technology like WebEx and FaceTime and other things where I could coach young mentors, not only those who are in ministry, but those who are nonprofit leaders or um, social entrepreneurs. I really want to find a way to build a national, if not international network of folks who I just um, share resources with. Um, I try my best to empower and to motivate them. That's something that gives me lots of joy, uh, even thinking about that. Um, next is helping to fight Alzheimer's disease. Um I've written about this a little bit. I need to write about it a little bit more. Um, I have a blog that's called Alzheimer's is a bitch. And uh, I talk about this ugly disease um, really taking over my mother's mind. One of the most um, brilliant and caring people I've ever known. Now, fortunately, she's still physically healthy. She knows me, my wife, my sister. She knows her grandchildren. But I can tell that she's still not herself. She's living in, um, in in a memory care facility really close to me. So I get to see her a lot. But um, but I want to help to find a cure. And so you know, up till now, I've not really wanted to do the walk. Those are important. I think doing the walk just made it true that my mom has Alzheimer's. Um, but I've recently been approached by um, some leading scientists in this field to help them write a, um, a white paper about what what ability, what what um, opportunities um, and support can the faith based community or just the community in large um, offer in understanding this disease? How can we partner together? How can we help folks who are not close to their families? And so I like dreaming bigger. I like taking something that's um, that's a personal issue, but doing something that helps to bring greater knowledge, greater awareness, and, maybe, and perhaps, no, certainly a cure. Um, so I want to be part of that. I just don't, I don't want to sit on the sidelines and allow something like, uh, like Alzheimer's to just to define who my mother is. It's it's a, it's an ailment. It's a disease she has right now. But that is not who she is. It's not who she's been. And it's not who I'm going to be. I'm not just the son of an Alzheimer's patient. I'm the son of Verlene G. But anything that I can do to help other families who are experiencing what we are experiencing, I really want to be a part of that. And I look I look forward to that. I think I have lots to contribute. Um, I want to do more genealogy work. Um, in just a few weeks, I'm going to be dropping a really nice group of podcasts that, um, you know, where people are able to just journey with me and understand what it's been like to, um, meet my white ancestors who are descendants of Reuben G who was the, the owner of the G plantation. It's where my great, great, great grandmother Venus was owned and raped, um, and enslaved and um, that's how my great great grandfather Henderson, my granddad's granddad, um, was born. Um, there's a lot of ugliness in that. But when you look at it and you consider what uh, my relatives are doing now, we realize that we've got a lot of strength, a lot of faith, a lot of things to be proud of to overcome that ugliness of American history as our own family's history. has just been powerful. And so when I look back, I don't just feel sad. I have disdain for all the ugliness and the rape and the ownership and the capitalism, of course. But when I look back, uh, I just see the strength and the, and the resilience of my family it makes me very, very proud to be a descendant of Henderson G. But I want to do more work. Um, I want to understand more about um, West Africa. I just um, had lunch last week 
with a gentleman who lives here in Madison, but he's a visiting professor at the University of Ghana. And he says that there's a process where um, they can actually look at you and your jawline and your facial structure and tell you what tribe you most likely came from. I want to spend time in Ghana. And, you know, the white G's are, are Welsh, which means I'm Welsh. I want to visit Wales. Um, it's it's that's a part of my history and my heritage. And I want to understand all of who I am. And it's just intriguing um, to me. And so more genealogy work, I just think is important because I also think that my story is America's story. And I think the more I tell my story, it makes us understand history a little differently. It makes us um, tied to history, regardless of our ethnic background. And it gives us a sense of greater culpability of making sure that our present is much brighter than our than our history. Um, next, I want to take more guys trips. Um, I've been married 30 years and Jackie, uh, we have good vacation time. We spent two weeks out of the country this past year. We celebrated our 30th anniversary away. And so um, so we have good family time. I gets it in um, and we do things with our family, with our daughter as well. But Jackie is really chill when it comes to guy trips, because one, she doesn't like to travel a whole lot. So she's glad she doesn't have to um, do all those extra trips with me. But um, when I turned 50, I went scuba diving and we searched with sand reef sharks in the Bahamas. Um, that was beautiful. It was scary as hell, but it was beautiful. We actually, you know, we're down there while, you know, feeding sharks. Um, I loved it. Um, when I uh, let's see what else. Um, this past year, this past summer, I went skydiving at 18,000 feet with some friends. That was great. That's like 3.4 miles. Um, I've gone on golfing trips. But, um, you know, I work hard, but I also want to play hard. I've got a friend who owns a dude ranch and um, he probably wouldn't call it that, but he has this great ranch where you can um, you can hunt elk or you can do bow hunting. I shot a turkey there um, several years ago. Um, you can fish. Um, um, I he's been asking me to bring a group of guys um, with me and I just have either not found the time or didn't find the right folks. I want to take advantage of that. I, you know, I, I want to, you know, rent houseboats and, and, and go on deep sea fishing trips. Um, uh, I actually, I want to, you know, I'm going to say this quietly cause I don't want my black car to be taken away, but I want to hike and I want to camp like at a, like at, at Yellowstone or like some of the, some of the, um, some of the famous parks. I don't want to be too close to the bears or anything like that, but I, the older I get, the more I enjoy the idea of outdoors kinds of activities. Now, I'm not going to be hiking like 10, you know, um, 10 miles or stuff like that. But I I want to enjoy more outdoor stuff. Um, I'd like to try rappelling. I like heights. Um, it just seems like that just seems like fun to me. Um, so more guys trips. Um, I just grouped these so that they wouldn't be three separate things, but more golf more tennis and more bowling. Bowling is cool because you can do that indoor. Tennis is just fun. I've loved tennis since I was in high school, since my friend Tim taught me how to play in golf. I've got a, a guy who's been coaching me, but I'll, I'll go to lessons and then I'll drop off and I'll go to lessons and I'll drop off. I want to do more than best ball. You know, I want to make some money out there um, on the green. Plus, I really like golf clothing. I really like golf clothing. Um, uh, I've got a really nice complexion. So plaid looks really good on me. And, um, and so I want to get out, <laughs> I want to get out and just do more stuff outside because it's too easy just to be, just to be captured inside. Um, I just got two more. One is mastering the grill and smokers. I got a friend, I got a couple of friends, Dwayne, Kevin, Jerome, these guys can just grill like crazy. And, um, but I really want to master the grill and smokers. I like to eat. I'm very carnivorous. Um, I love watching cooking shows, but um, the idea of cooking outside, that's why I think the smoker and grilling is just important because it gives me an excuse just to stand outside for hours and hours and hours at a time. Um, and then I, you know, just like to hang out in my yard more and just um, do yard kinds of things. And the last thing on my 2019 list is um, I really want to convert my backyard into a real haven. Um, I did a wedding in California a couple of months ago and the entire back backyard was concrete. Um, you know, I'm sure that it was an Airbnb. So I'm sure it was, you know, owned by an older family where they didn't have a lot of kids. But it just it was cool because you could set up lots of chairs and fire pits. Um, but I just sit inside a lot for work and at home. And I just feel better when I'm outside. And if I could, you know, 
you know, concrete eyes, my backyard or find some cool ways just to to um, just do it up a little bit. A pergola, some of those cool lights that you kind of weave through them, a couple different fire pits. Um, I want to I would really like to do that. You know, I work hard, but when I'm off, I'm really off and I'm really away and I like to entertain. So by conquering the grill and the smoker and just doing some cool things in my background, uh, in my backyard, I can have more friends and family over. So those are the those are the 10 things that I'm looking forward to doing. Those aren't necessarily resolutions. Um, I know what those things are. You know, I know that I've got to get to the gym and those kinds of things I will do. I have to do. But these are things I these are things I want to do. So take a moment and and decide. Think about and decide what is it that you really want to do in 2019? Life doesn't just happen or shouldn't just happen to us. So be proactive. It's your life. So don't just let things happen to you. You know what you've got to do. You've got to work out. You've got to do your bills. You've got to cut your lawn. You've got to go to work. But you get weekends. You get evenings. You get mornings. What do you want to do? What would help you to offset the pressure of the things that you must do? Um, Think about those. Write those down and be as committed to your fun as you are to the things that you really don't want to do, but you've got to do. And hey, just one more thing. I want to broaden my um, my my um, my network of um, of just um, exciting um, African-American uh, professionals. And so I'm in a small market. I'm in Wisconsin. But I think that, you know, we've got a great network. And so um, if you know folks um, who are African-Americans, who are scientists, particularly anyone who's connected like with NASA or, or rocket science kinds of stuff. Um, and I would love for you to get in to, to, to get in touch with me. I'll tell you how to do that in just a bit. Um, I want to um, what's the proper name, guys, for marijuana growers, farmers. Is that is that is it called hemp? Is it called marijuana growers? Weed growers, legal weed. I mean, the legal ones now. All right. I mean, the ones that are really doing this. Um, I know my sister Laleda did a had a had a woman. She was a group. She was a part of a group of African-American women who were who were marijuana growers. Getting in, getting in on the business. I want to interview someone um, um, about that artist, painters, dancers, professional performers, folks, folks on Broadway. You know, I know some folks. Cannabis farmer. Oh, cannabis. Thank you. That's right. That's it. Weed farming. That sounds so. Uh, yeah. C- cannabis farmers. Please help me find cannabis. Experts in cannabis cultivation. Experts in cannabis cultivation um, who are black. And they're doing this above board. I want you to get in touch with me. Black artists, you know, if you're black and you got a friend that's black and they're in Hamilton, help me find them. Send them my way. And um, African-American museum curators. And so if you're part of a black history museum, um, um, civil rights museum, you, you're like, oh, wait, I know someone. I know someone, you know, and this is where my white listeners can say I. I know black people. I want you to prove you know black people. Help me find some of these folks. So scientists, cannabis cultivators, artists, actors. Um, I'm tr- I want to get more of you on black elected officials, particularly those that are serving on a statewide or federal level. Um, um, senators and, um, and and Congress folks. If you know folks who would love to be on black like me, um, and museum curators, museum curators. And so um, there's a couple of ways that you can do this you, on on um, on Twitter. You can just holler at me. Um, it's at Alex G. Jr. The same thing on Instagram. Or you could go to Reverend Dr. Alex G. on Facebook and just write me a note or a private message. Um, you can link the person's name. And listen, don't just Google black people in these fields and send me the link. I could do that. But I'm just asking the black like me family to help me find more black people like me. And so I would just love to have conversations with folks because I have such an interest in these topics and I would love to have them on our show. So so go to Reverend Dr. Alex G. Write me, um, you know, a private message. Um, Someone from my team will get right back in touch with you. And um, let's make 2019 an exciting year um, in every every aspect, every sphere of our life. This has been a tremendous year and I'm looking forward to an even um, greater experience in 2019. And thank you for being a big part of why 2018 has been so exciting. This is Dr. Alex G and I'm the proud podcast host of Black Like Me with Dr. Alex G. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. You can find out more about Dr. Alex G's amazing work at www.alexg.com. Black Like Me is sponsored by the generosity of the Human Family Unity Foundation. 